Hello friends, welcome to another session of the respiratory physiology and in this lecture we will see about the regulation of respiration. Your respiration is regulated. What is the basic, basic aim of this regulation? Basic aim is that the partial pressure of the CO2, the partial pressure of the oxygen should be maintained constant in your blood and in your tissues. Not only in day to day conditions, but even when there is a respiratory stress condition, such as even during the exercise also. So, all the effort, the body is making all the effort so that the respiratory respiration can be maintained, so that the partial pressure of the CO2, the partial pressure of the oxygen, and the partial pressure of the uh, oxygen and CO2 does not change in the blood and the tissues. The respiratory centers, as with the other vital centers, they are located in pons and medulla, the group of neurons which are mainly regulate the your respiration. They are situated in pons and medulla, the reticular activating system of the pons and medulla. This respiratory centers in turn receives input from many of the other centers and they act on the feedback information receiving, receiving to them. The input, main input, input is there from the chemoreceptors. What the chemoreceptors will do? They will sense the mainly the oxygen concentration, they will sense the carbon dioxide concentration and they will give information to the respiratory centers and the respiration will be modified according to that. If the oxygen level is falling, the partial pressure of oxygen level is falling in the blood, the information will be given to the respiratory centers, the ventilation will be increased. Same thing will happen if the carbon dioxide level is going on increasing, so it will cause increase in the ventilation, right? So, this is mainly the, this. apart from the chemoreceptors, even number of the, even the cardiac, cardiovascular center, not only that, even for the deglutition center and even from the higher centers, from the cortex, hypothalamus, all the information goes to the respiratory center and the respiration can be modified according to the input received by it. Now, the respiratory centers, as I told you, is composed of number of group of neurons. They are situated mainly bilaterally in the pons and medulla related to the reticular activating system related to that. What they consist of? They consist of the following as we can see in this table. They consist of, we will call it as the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. Now what the dorsal respiratory group of neurons? These are the most important ones which are situated in the dorsal portion of the medulla and these are the ones which are mainly responsible for your tidal inspiration as well as expiration. So, tidal ventilation is mainly regulated by what? Dorsal respiratory group of neurons. Then we have got is the ventral respiratory group of, group of neurons which are mainly situated in the ventrolateral part of the medulla. And they are useful for the forceful inspiration and expiration as such. You can remember the dive. What do you mean by dive? D-I-V-E. That means dorsal respiratory group of neurons, they mainly regulate the inspiration as such. Dorsal, is, that is the tidal inspiration and expiration. Whereas VE, dive, that is V, ventral respiratory group of neurons, they are mainly responsible for the forceful expiration as well as forceful inspiration, right. Then we have got another center that is called as the pneumotaxic center. Pneumo stands for air, taxic means what? The rate. So, these are the ones which are mainly regulate the rate and depth of respiration. They can change the rate of death, depth of respiration. They are situated, ultimately they will act over the dorsal respiratory group of neurons and the ventral respiratory group of neurons to change the rate and depth of the respiration. They are situated dorsally in the superior portion of the pons. And then somewhere between the pneumotaxic center and the other respiratory centers, this is situated, they are called as the apnostic center. What do you mean by apnea? Apnea is the stoppage of the breathing in a deep state of inspiration. So it was seen that whenever we stimulate this apnostic center, the respiration stops in a deep state, state of inspiration. So this is called as the apnostic center. That is related and it is thought that it will mainly monitor the depth of respiration. Right? So now we will see one by one the importance of the each new each that is the neuronal centers. Dorsal respiratory group of neurons. As I told you, these are the ones which will mainly regulate your tidal inspiration as well as tidal expiration. It was seen that from this group of neurons, spontaneous rhythmical discharge of is there, which goes mainly to the muscles, respiratory muscles. 
this rhythmical discharge of the discharge from this neurons which will impulses then goes to the the respiratory muscles this is in form of a called as the ramp signal the generally we have got is the inspiratory ramp signal so what is seen in that the frequency of the impulses from the inspired that it will go on increasing slowly so this is the frequency will go on increasing slowly the, then it will become the frequency will increase increase and then they suddenly shut off the frequency will stop so ultimately so then there is a suddenly shut off and the frequency will stop so there is no more impulses coming going to the respiratory muscles so what will happen now this is and then there is a pause for 3 seconds and again the phenomena will repeat so this is called as inspiratory ramp signal the frequency of impulses that is sent to the respiratory muscles it will go on increasing and then suddenly it will stop and then there is a pause for 3 seconds again the frequency will go on increasing impulses will start frequency will go on increasing for 2 seconds and again there is a pause for 3 seconds stoppage for this is called as inspiratory ramp signal now what is the importance of this inspiratory ramp signal is that as you can see here the frequency of the impulses to the inspiratory muscles mainly it will go on increasing so the steady and slow inspiration is produced it's not a gasping or sudden inspiration but there is a steady and slow inspiration that will take place and now if you recall what is the cause of tidal expiration tidal expiration is because of the elastic recoil so when there the now inspiration has taken place now and suddenly now there is no no more impulses to the inspiratory muscles now suddenly because of the elastic recoil now the thorax the lung they will come back to their normal position so what will happen because of that tidal expiration so this sudden stoppage of the impulses is important to cause tidal expiration because of the elastic recoil not only that but if the body wants to increase the rate of respiration what it will do it will cause early shut off we can call this as early shut off so in that case what will happen the period of inspiration that will be shorten up not only that but because of the secondary effect the period of expiration also will be shorter so because of when it causes early shut off the respiration can respiratory rate can be increased if the body wants to increase the depth of respiration what it will cause frequency will go on increasing more rapidly so this slope will become more vertical now so in that case the frequency will be going on increasing rapidly it can be reached to this level and then again the rapid shut off so by that way the depth also can be increased right but remember the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are the one which are mainly going to regulate the tidal respiration now coming to the ventral respiratory group of neuron then what is the function of the ventral respiratory group of neuron it was found that they contain both the type of the neurons i neurons which are mainly responsible for inspiration and the e neurons which will send impulses mainly to the expiratory muscles here the no forceful expiratory muscles which will cause the expiration i neurons send impulses to the forceful inspiratory muscles also so what is the function of ventral respiratory group of neurons ventral respiratory group of neurons will come into action whenever forceful inspiration or expiration is required so remember they help the dorsal respiratory group of neurons to cause to do cause forceful inspiration as well as the expiration so this is the function of the ventral respiratory group of neurons what is the function of the pneumotaxic center pneumotaxic center will increase mainly the rate and it will regulate. how it is going to increase the rate of the respiration by causing the early switch off so that this inspiratory ramp signal if there is a early switch off of this impulses what will happen the period of inspiration that will be shorter up and because of the second effect the even the expiration period will be shorter up and now the whole respiratory rate that can be increased the rate of respiration apnoeic center as i have told you stimul it will it is going to increase the depth of respiration so that the person can inspire most for more forcefully to its depth now this is about the neuronal centers which regulate the respiration as i have told you they get input input mainly from the chemoreceptors so we will see about the chemical regulation of respiration 
where this thus chemoreceptor receptor they are situated and how they send signal to the neuronal centers ultimately how they modify the neuronal activity so continuous feedback or partial pressure of o2 or partial pressure of co2 is given by the chemoreceptors there are two types of chemoreceptors according to the location central chemoreceptors which are situated in the ventral portion of the medulla that is just beneath the ventral portion that is and then we have got is the peripheral chemoreceptors which are situated at the periphery in the carotid bodies and in the aortic bodies arch of aorta in the carotid sinus right central chemoreceptors located bilaterally lies 0.2 mm beneath the ventral surface of the medulla now this situation this location is very near to your respiratory centers so as you can see from the location central chemoreceptors will have the major role in regulating the respiration and the central chemoreceptors they are mainly sensitive to h plus ion concentration which are ultimately generated from the co2 we will say that the co2 will ultimately generate the h plus ion and the h plus ion concentration can be sensed by the central chemoreceptors and they will immediately act over the respiratory center to cause increase the ventilation or decrease the ventilation now the central chemoreceptors they are more sensitive for the h plus ion but the problem is that the the h plus ions they it, they are not readily diffusible to the blood brain barrier but the co2 it can easily diffuse to the blood brain barrier so the if the plasma cell level of the co2 it has increased it will diffuse it will go uh, diffuse inside the blood brain barrier and here co2 will combine with h2 as you can see in this reaction co2 will combine with h2 to form h2co3 which will ultimately break down into h plus and bicarbonate ion so what will happen because of that this h plus ion can stimulate the central chemoreceptors and they act as a main factor which are going to increase the ventilation so h plus stimulation will increase the ventilation but unfortunately this strong effect of h plus ion will remain only for one to two days because if there is excess co2 that means what will happen this is acidosis and to compensate this acidosis the bicarbonate the amount of bicarbonate ion absorbed and synthesized by the kidney that is going to increase so there is compensatory increase in the bicarbonate ion concentration because of that the h plus ion concentration ultimately it will subside down and because of that the stimulatory effect of h plus ions will not remain for longer time more than 3 to 4 days is because of the compensatory effect but the oxygen also act through the is can modify the the neuronal centers respiratory centers how does the oxygen can act the oxygen will act to the peripheral chemoreceptors this peripheral chemoreceptors they are situated in the carotid bodies and the aortic bodies this carotid and the aortic bodies they will have the glomus cells we call it as and these cells are supplied by large volume of the blood that means they have got about 20 times of their weight the amount of the blood supply what is the importance of that the so that the co2 level of this blood will almost does not increase that means the oxygen level in the blood will almost be similar to that of the arterial blood even if the oxygen is taken by the glomus cell it will be very less compared to that so in short the glomus cells are continuously bathed by the arterial blood and they can sense the partial pressure of the oxygen in the arterial blood this glomus cells they have got the oxygen sensitive potassium channels so whenever the oxygen partial pressure of the oxygen decreases now this oxygen sensitive potassium channels will close down in the glomus cell once the oxygen sensitive potassium channels are closed down potassium ion a positive ion will remain inside the cell ultimately what will happen because of that depolarization and the action potentials will be generated and this action potential will be carried out by the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve to the respiratory center and then the respiration is modified accordingly by the this input from the peripheral centers but remember when it compares to the co2 and o2 co2 is much more effective in modifying the respiration that as compared to that of the o2 what are the other reflexes which can monitor or which can control the respiration as i told you respiratory centers receive input even from the higher centers if it receives the input from the cerebral cortex let's say 
you might have that uh, the voluntary control of respiration the voluntary control of respiration we can voluntarily control the respiration for some time we can either hyperventilate or we can stop the ventilation how does we do that the information from the that impulses from the cerebral cortex they will go to the respiratory center and we can change the respiration for some time it has got its own importance that if we want to control the respiration voluntarily for some time this, this can happen only for the few because then there will be change in the co2 level in the plasma and the o2 level and ultimately they will strongly stimulate the respiratory centers we will call that as a breakpoint then there is another reflex which is called as the herring bro reflex inflation reflex what is herring bro inflation reflex whenever there is excessive stretching whenever there is a inspiration that is about more than 1.5 liters of the inspiration then there is excessive stretching of the respiratory passage the trachea alveoli stretch receptors that they, they will be stimulated and they will cause switch off of the inspiratory ramp signal so if there is switch off what will happen the inspiration will stop and the expiration will produce so this is mainly happens this is called as the herring broth inflation reflex so with this we come to end of this lecture thank you